somebody comes up to you and says, hey, balance that reaction. You know, just right off the street, balance that reaction. You say, well, okay, I think that's a redox reaction, so I'm going to balance this and I'm going to make sure not only do I have to balance it atomically, but you have to actually worry about these charges too. That equation actually can be kind of tricky to balance if you don't have a technique called oxidation numbers to be able to solve it. Let me show you what these are all about. Oxidation numbers or oxidation states are numbers that we assign to various elements, kind of an informal type of charge that we give them in order to determine whether or not they gain or lose electrons in chemical reactions. Now, I'm going to give you all the rules for oxidation numbers as we go ahead and just do them right now. So I've got a whole bunch of chemicals here listed on the board and we'll just go through them and assign oxidation numbers. And then you'll be able to give oxidation numbers for everything. Here we go. All elements in their natural state, the way they're, they're found in nature, they have oxidation numbers equal to zero. So, if you look at oxygen, oxygen in its natural state, O2, so we put down underneath oxygen a zero. That's its oxidation state. What about hydrogen, H2? Zero, because that's the way the element is found in nature. All right, now, here's H positive. When hydrogen is not in its elemental state, it always has a plus one charge. Also, any type of free-floating ion has as its oxidation number whatever charge it is. And so therefore, because that's a plus one, hydrogen is plus one. And it's always plus one in a compound. Hydrogen is plus one. Now, here is SO4 two negative. And you've got to assign oxidation numbers to the sulfur and to the oxygen. Well, here's the rule for oxygen. When it's not in its elemental form, but in a compound or any kind of chemical, O is two negative. There's, there's, there's an exception, and there's, there's a couple of them, but I'll tell you that in just a second. Just 99% of the time, O is 2 negative, so, or negative 2. So here's sulfur and oxygen, and we give oxygen a negative 2. We just write down what one oxygen is here, but there's four oxygens, so now get this, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. But this polyatomic ion says, I only want to keep a 2 negative charge. So what does the sulfur's charge have to be? Plus 6. Because plus 6 added to negative 2 times 4 equals a total of 2 negative. That's how you do oxidation numbers in polyatomic ions. Okay, now, hydrogen is always plus 1. But oxygen here can't be minus 2 because look at minus 2 times 2 would be negative 4 plus 2 would give you a 2 negative charge, but this hydrogen peroxide is 0. So oxygen in hydrogen peroxide is negative 1. That's an exception. Oxygen is always 2 negative, negative 2, except when it's in hydrogen peroxide and <laughs> see OF2? Fluorine is more electronegative on the periodic table. Electronegativity is something you've learned in grade 10. And there's only one element more electronegative than oxygen, and it's fluorine. So fluorine gets its normal charge of negative 1, which means that in this case, the total must be 0 for this molecule. Negative 1 times 2, that's a negative 2 total. Oxygen has to be plus 2 in order to make a 0 charge for that compound. Uh, no, there's a couple of exceptions for oxygen, but 99% of the time, oxygen is negative 2 in a compound. Like this one, oxygen is negative 2. So what does that make each potassium here to give a total of 0 here? You with me? Plus 1. Plus 1 times 2 is going to be plus 2, and negative 2 makes a 0 charge. So what about this, though? Look, there's no oxygen or hydrogen in the compound, so you don't know anything for sure. But when you see that, you break chemicals down into their ions. K is normally positive, and S is 2 negative on the periodic table. Those are their ionic charges. So when you're stuck, break things down into ions. And look, that plus 1, that goes there. That minus 2, that goes there. It goes minus 2 here. It's 2 negative here, but it goes minus 2 for an oxidation number. Minus 2 plus 1 times 2 equals a total of 0. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. Look at this one. Hydrogen is always plus 1. Plus 1, that's 8. The total is 0. What is going to be the oxidation number of the carbon here? Oh my goodness, that, that's crazy. Look at that. It's got to be, it's going to have to be a negative, first of all, and it's going to have to be a fraction. But look, 
if you go negative 8 thirds, I know it sounds kooky, but look, negative 8 over 3 times 3 is negative 8. Yeah. Plus positive 8 gives you a charge of 0. You can have fractions as oxidation numbers. Negative 8 thirds. Yeah, that's fine. This one is huge. But if you take the Na here, and this, this is actually a polyatomic ion, and break it down to its ions. Na is positive. Cr2O7 on the, period, on the polyatomic ion chart, so it's called dichromate, it's a 2 negative. Na positive plus 1. All of this has to equal 2 negative. Oxygen is always minus 2. Minus 2 times 7. Negative 14. What does each chromium have to be here? Plus 6. 6 times 2 is 12. Plus negative 14 equals 2 negative. And so you just take those, transfer them here, plus 1, plus 6, minus 2, and that's how you do oxidation numbers. And believe it or not, that's going to help in balancing that last equation. Watch.